dance music is what is what let me know that I could make music because of just how queer friendly that kind of genre of music is. And I'm not saying not to say hip hop is just this hyper homophobic environment because people always want to talk to me about that. And it's like Jermaine Dupri didn't block me from getting into a club or 50 Cent is not like gay bashing me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Not to say those things can't happen, but that's not my experience. So for me, it kind of the hip hop and the dance music kind of go hand in hand. Like it's like I'm kind of fusing it in a way where it's like the dance records are a little too hip hop and the hip hop is a little too dance. That's kind of in my yeah thing. Microphone check. One, two. What is this? It's the five foot seven assassin in the podcast business. I am your host, Rohan Patra, the rap music plug at your service. Here we are again. The black sheep is an idiom used to describe a member of a group who doesn't fit in with the rest. Now, while this is often used with a negative connotation as a deviant within the group that is viewed unfavorably, I feel there's a flip side to this black sheep concept that can actually be a positive, where not exactly fitting in to one specific group can allow you to pull from many different influences and combine that all into something one of one, something truly special. This is a dynamic that I discussed with today's guest, Cakes Tequila, who I believe is a prime example of how this dynamic can work as a positive. Cakes' sound influences are derived not only from hip-hop music, but dance-oriented genres like house and ballroom as well. And then his lyrical perspectives and points of view are colored by his queer identity yet are delivered through a rap style that pulls from a traditionally straight male dominated lane of hip hop, a lane of hip hop that gets often labeled as hardcore where technical rap ability is of the utmost importance. Therefore, Cakes's rap delivery follows in the footsteps of some of the genre's most charismatic and expressive MCs in a Red Man or a Busta Rhymes, for example it truly makes for some fantastically unique and fun music. So Cakes Tequila is here today to discuss his journey as an artist, how his identity has influenced his artistry and how he chooses to present this, his approach to blending different sounds together, and how he tackled the making of his super entertaining and well-executed new album, Black Sheep. The Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV is the remedy to the I don't have anything good to listen to problem. Through in-depth artist interviews, album reviews, and general rap commentary on the best that the underground rap scene has to offer, this is your one-stop shop to knowing what to add to your queue, play next, or pop into your record player. Welcome to the show. Case to kill, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good in a food coma. How are you? (laughs) In a food coma. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was the 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 festival you were just at? Yeah, I just got back in from Dragon Fest. So I ate like a bunch of buns and I had like grilled oysters. It was a big thing. So yeah. Mm. Nice, nice. Happy to be here. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. So yeah, I really appreciate the time, man, because uh, you know, as an artist, I feel like you are really many things in one package. And it makes, you know, in like listening to your music and kind of getting to know you as an artist really interesting but it also is fun when it comes to try and like recommending you to other like friends of mine or any people that like music mm-hmm. and so if i were to show someone your music that let's say isn't as familiar and just really loves like more kind of traditional hip-hop like there is something that i can share from your catalog to them and they'll fucking love it like i think mm-hmm. my example would be crushing the club because that's like one of your my favorite rap performances from you is fucking incredible and i think when it comes to that like raw rap skill you do have and have developed what are some of like the people that have set the blueprint for you and have influenced your kind of emceeing approach right well um growing up obviously i've always listened to rap music but i never thought that i could be a rapper just because of growing up in the 90s to be queer and be a rapper it wasn't like a thing Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I would listen to rap music and be inspired to say I could do it. But the people that kind of got me into recording myself and wanted to make music, it was a lot of like ballroom commentators. Like when we would have like 
balls where people vogue i'm sure a lot of people know what ballroom is now they have commentators who basically like rap over these beats so hearing that listening to a lot of club music um and also watching videos from from jamaica they have like um sting which is a festival they used to have where two reggae artists like clash they like rap battle each other so that kind of style is what influences me technically but as like a rapper like there's not like a rapper i could say that i was like i wanted to sound like mm. So yeah, so it was more outside things that influenced me technically. And and what shifted that mindset for you to say, oh, I just like this music to being like, oh, I actually could do that. Because you said that wasn't initially something you saw for yourself early on. I think it was other people's reaction to me making the music. Like it wasn't like um, I thought I could survive as an artist. I could have a career at it or it wasn't a thought of whether or not I was good or bad at it. I was just doing it to get entry into clubs and get drink tickets. Like, you know what I'm trying to <laughs> So it wasn't really about that per se until other people were like, oh, you're actually good at it. And that's when I started, you know, working hard on being a, like an MC because I was like, oh, if I'm going to be gay and be rapping, I can't be corny because it's like they're already going to like say that about me. So I was like, I have to make sure that I'm actually like rapping on a certain level. So mm -hmm. yeah. That's and have you and have you felt that like because of that uh being queer that you have a certain kind of expectation that's just like you haven't hit a different bar than like someone who's not just because of the the perception i think yeah i think that that was a lot of the pressure that was put on me from like just myself and just from other people when i first was coming out i could remember like telling other people that I would like other rappers that I would meet, like I was a rapper too, and they couldn't believe it. But this is mm -hmm. like early on in my career. I think the, the tide has kind of shifted in just the rap genre musically. I don't think lyrics is are as important as they used to be. So it kind of got to the point where it's like, I don't even have to put that pressure on me anymore. Because it's like, who's really rapping? Like, you know, they're trying to get, you know, five mics in the source or be on a, you know, they're not mm -hmm. rapping like that anymore. So... So, yeah, it's it, I've seen the shift in my career, I would say. And, you know, there's something I saw in a previous interview of yours that you were explaining your name. Yeah. And uh, so, like, Cakes was because you have a big ass. And right. then Dequila was just because of, like, you know, it's hip hop, like MC, right. whatever. And Clearly, I just found out. I never knew I would have to answer to. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I was, yeah, I know. That's, yeah, it's, I like, it's fucking hilarious. I, I right. truly didn't actually know what you meant, but I had a feeling it might have been that. Right. Um, But... I bring that up just because it's funny and it just kind of makes me think of just a lot of in your music, like you seem very comfortable and open to showcase this kind of humor, this kind of your personality. Uh, you can be raunchy a lot of times and you just have a lot of fun with it. And I wonder like, how, how did you develop that kind of comfort level? Because it does seem as an outsider, something that might take some time to really kind of put out to the world like that. Well, I think when you're making art that you don't think anyone is ever going to see, you're very comfortable because <laughs> it's like, who's going to listen to this shit? Like, it's like, I don't I don't give a fuck. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? So like, even with my name, I'm just like, I'm going to make myself the joke before anyone else could put the joke on me. So but yeah, I don't the, the comfort was just, you know, I knew I was I'm always a confident person and I write all my own music. So a lot of those characteristics and my personality were the whether it's the humor, the campiness, it's all going to be there because it's me, you know, like I write all my own music. But it's not anything that I like think to do or I'm trying to do. It's just like, this is how it is, you know? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think you're the ingredients, the specific ingredients you put into your music makes it really stand out. Like mm -hmm. you're not the first rapper ever to kind of rap over kind of dance floor ready rhythms and things like that. But I think just that in blended in with that, you're very just in a vacuum great rap ability is just an intoxicating mix like it's just you really can kind of well, it gives you a lot of versatility to rap over like more trappier shit right. glitchier shit and then like a lot of this new album like a lot more like dance floor ready nightclub nightclub type stuff mm -hmm. and so when it gets to your sound you know you blend in elements of ballroom jazz a lot especially on this new album that i like house hip-hop what what attracted you to blend all of these sounds together into this kind of unique concoction you've you've been working with throughout the years? Yeah. Well, I think like I've been making music for like, you know, a little over a decade. So at this point, it's just me being comfortable blending the different things that I actually listen to and inspire me into my music. I think a lot of the times earlier in my career, I was making projects that I thought people would expect of me, basically trying to pertain to certain genres or certain aesthetics and just stick to that where 
now I'm kind of like, I don't give a fuck. It's like, if I want to have a little trumpet on an album or on a single, it's like, I like that because that's that's cool. That's what I listen to. So for me, it's kind of hard because it's it's hard to kind of categorize my music because there's so much genre blending going on. But I do think at this point, um, artists should just be able to have that freedom to do what they want to do. Like, it's a bitch if I'm trying to get like a Grammy or something, because it's like, how do you categorize this? Or like, how do you sell this? <laughs> But to me, I'm just like the, the art is just me, you know, so, yeah. And, you know, like between the entry points of the different genres that you work with, like which one was the main style of music that attracted you first? Was it hip hop or was it kind of more houseier stuff? It was kind of both. You see, it's like the the the, the dance music is what is what let me know that I could make music because of just how queer friendly that kind of genre of music is. And I'm not saying not to say hip hop is just this hyper homophobic environment because people always want to talk to me about that. And it's like, Jermaine Dupri didn't block me from getting into a club or 50 Cent is not like gay bashing me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Not to say those things can't happen, but that's not my experience. So for me, it kind of, the hip hop and the dance music kind of go hand in hand. Like it's like, I'm kind of fusing it in a way where it's like the dance records are a little too hip hop and the hip hop is a little too dance. That's kind of been my yeah thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, that's what makes it unique. That's what I find it like fascinating that you're treading this really particular line in a very skillful way. I find yeah. and it's and just I like, yeah, when it comes to your creative process, particularly when it comes to blending all these sounds together, where does your mind typically go first? Like, is it, trying to think of the the sound and the rhythms or is it more like your lyrics and or like a melody that comes to your mind it really depends like sometimes i could hear a beat and the beat kind of dictates to me what the song is going to be other times i could already have like a concept already pre-written and then we kind of like place it on a beat or we make a beat around it i think that that's the latter is kind of my favorite when i could just have an idea and work with a producer who kind of puts the puts the story in a landscape because it feels more like organic to it but yeah, that's why I also like working with producers that kind of like lock in with me. So that's why I work a lot with like Sam Katz and a lot of other producers, because it's like it's easier to create something with someone that's speaking your language, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like throughout the years as a listener, I've really grown to enjoy. And I don't know if you've noticed this too, this trend of having in hip hop, especially having more one producer, one rapper albums. I feel like it's becoming the kind of the, the trend these days especially yeah. in the indie space. And I just like it, as like you said, because you can uncover these intricacies and nuances and how you guys can make music together that doesn't happen if it's just like one-off beats. Because right. most of the time you're kind of just being like, okay, you sent this to me. I like it. Let me make it work. Whereas you yeah. can kind of have a conversation. But I think, yeah, because for me, like I'm used to albums that are that kind of have kind of like a thread through them. Like they kind of have like one narrative. So for me, it's easier to do that when you're dealing with one person because it's like, you know, even with that with the album, like none of the beats really sound the same, but it, it's kind of has a similar groove because it's made from the same person. So I kind of like that. I mean, the downside of that is if you're trying to promote a record, it's harder because it's only two people. <laughs> like, you mm -hmm. know, if you have a record and you're working with five producers, that that's more people to help get the word out. But for me, with my albums, I kind of like it to be more conceptual and I want the listener to be in a full, you know, world. So I like to just work with one other person. Oh, and I think you really do that. And and on this new album, Black Sheep, uh, in particular, the expanded version, which, by the way, I have to say, as a side note, I'm weird with music and deluxe editions. I'm just kind of really like not a I like I like hearing the original. And if I hear it's a bonus yeah. track, I'm like, OK, it's probably not what they liked as much. And I have these stupid biases right. that I'm sure just me. But with yours, this is a great deluxe edition, like those additional, I think, four tracks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those are fucking really great additions. I love them, especially okay. the the title track, Black Sheep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a skit at the end of this song where I think it's definitely in a tongue in cheek way. Someone's like urging you to push the gay agenda. And it's it's a nice wow. moment there. But it got me thinking about that concept in general. And this idea of like, do you find yourself wanting to put your identity at the forefront for a particular reason, you know, maybe provide a voice for certain experiences and perspectives? Or would you actually prefer the inverse where people don't think about that as much on the top of mind and are just like listening to the the music and all that stuff? 
Well, honestly, it's kind of both. Like I obviously I don't have the privilege to be somebody that's stealth. Like my identity, my career identity is very much on my sleeve. Like I can't not <laughs> be. Mm. So there was no choice in that. Um for me, I think the only issue was when that when those conversations eclipses the talent and the music. Cause a lot of the times I could think about records that I've written that like like Crushing in a Club, for example, if another rapper would have put that out how it would have been received would have been kind of different if they were like a straight rapper or somebody that was more like in that trap kind of world. So for me, it's like, I kind of wish people didn't focus so much on it, but I also know that that visibility is also very important because that's what kind of gave me the label of like pioneer or all the other bullshit when I'm just like actively just being myself and making music. So it, it's kind of like, it has its pros and it has its cons, like most things in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And Like when it, yeah, that idea of representation is always something that's a bit funny, not funny in like that way, but just it, I don't know how I feel about it all the time. I think when I was younger, I didn't really understand it. Like I didn't really think, I thought it was kind of this like very liberal way of looking at things. But now in other ways I've start as I've grown older, like as a, as a South Asian person, even seeing some rappers in, in the hip hop community do something and represent a different view of what South Asian men are in particular in North America, I ended up realizing that, oh, shit, this actually, like, is having an effect on me. This is making me Right. feel oh, like, like, oh, shit, we're actually can be seen as cool because, like, I mean, I don't know if you've, you've seen South Asian male representation in North America Oh, is just fucking terrible. It is, okay, it's, we're, it's not, it's not hip. Yeah, it's not it's, what's, it's it's like, not what's I just think of Big Bang Theory. It's like, we're yeah. not sexless nerds all the time. Yeah, Some all of the us time. are, and that's fine too, but Yeah, Jesus Christ, right. man. So. But see, that's the thing. Like the visibility in certain things is important. To me, it's just, it sucks when that visibility then becomes like a crutch or it's just like you become like a caricature of yourself, you know, which like you just Yeah. said, some Southeast Asian men maybe do fit that. Maybe they they do see that and they feel like that, but that doesn't en encompass all, you know, the whole experience. So that's why it's just good, but I don't I don't know. Like I'm just, you know, just doing me. Yeah, because I think it's it needs to like that identity in, in what you put in your music. It should just it's necessary context because it's not like you avoid it in your music, but it should be part of the conversation, not the conversation where it's like, oh, that's an interesting way to look. That gives me context to what I'm absorbing, but I'm still absorbing the sounds, the flows, the And I think that words. that's why for me with my albums, I always try to, to cater to different people. And it's not like I'm trying to, like, it's it's natural because to me, it's like I have no problem doing a more boom bappy record or doing something that could be more like ballroom inspired. That's for the club. To me, that's fine because I'm writing it all and it's on me. But I just have to be mindful of that because I don't want to lose that hip hop purist. That's like, what does this person think they're doing rapping? And I also don't want to, you know, lose, you know, the queer audience that's just like, just give us something cute for the club that we could relate to as a queer consumer. So that's why I try to make my albums like, you know, hit every, every point, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, and w for this album, particularly Black Sheep, like who was that audience that you were mainly thinking of when you were that you were trying to cater to this record to? Well, for me, it wasn't like a set person. I knew I needed to, I wanted to have some like upbeat club um records, which is like, com like the singles are kind of a little bit more upbeat, but I Yeah. definitely knew I wanted this project to be like a hip hop record, which is actually, it, it wasn't supposed to be a deluxe. It just came out that way because of streaming. And, you know, so I'm happy when you hear it because I hate deluxes too. I'm like, what's the point, you know? But so for you, I agree with you, but when you, for you to be like, oh, it actually made sense. It's like, it should make sense because it was supposed to come out all in one. So, you know, I'm happy you, you, you got that. But for me, I just wanted to do a, a proper like hip hop record. So that's why when you get towards the end of it, you hear that it's like, I wanted to make a record that sounds like the hip hop records that I grew up listening to. So, you yeah know. yeah and i think you did a good job of that and just generally with your career you know and taking stock of the way you've navigated uh your career your success that you've achieved i feel like you've really made some good decisions and seem to have fared well in a very often treacherous industry Truly. with a lot of like you know you kept your integrity you've kept Correct. like i heard i saw in a, as i was preparing for this a story of how you uh you uh didn't want to do an ad because they were trying to make you a type make you do a type of music thing it was like uh, bounce music right Like bounce music, right? yeah Yeah, yeah. where it's like and that ended up being It ended a super up being bowl a ad super bowl. <laughs> which is like i i mean 
like obviously you didn't know that in advance but still like yeah. just the that I mean, integrity is, is there yeah. and i mean but i get, i do get it like i do get when some artists don't really rely too much on like artistic integrity because people need to survive it's just for me the the quick payoff is never worth it because it's like once you're like labeled corny or like not it anymore especially in the social media climate you cannot shake that like I know so many artists that I've come up with who were way more popular than me way more seemingly successful than me but it's just like the time came and went and it's very unfortunate when you're just trying to be an artist and make your work so I'm very mindful on of that because I'm just like all money isn't good money so mm. you just have, it's like you have to think of yourself as like a brand or a business and then like, you know yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of artists that I can think of that actually had not only looked like bl bubbled up due to their own talent, but had like a real corporate label backing. Right. And then they got they just made some moves that were not received well and they were labeled corny and they're just done. And I'm yeah. just like, wow, like like there's I don't want to name names, but there's a lot of them. And um Please don't. Please yeah, don't. no, no need for that. But right. uh yeah, so like based on what you've learned throughout you know, these years, decade plus working as a musician, like what would be that number one piece of advice you'd give to someone, particularly when it comes to maintaining creative freedom while and integrity while still kind of managing your career successfully? Right. I think the one thing that I would say to any artist who's trying to do like this whole thing, like the way I'm doing it, which is like very just honest and just doing what you want to do you have to realize that there will be moments where you will not feel successful especially with social media when you're looking at other artists because everyone is making music now there will be times when you will feel like why am I doing this but I think you just have to always remember it's about the music and it's about the art and don't be so hard on yourself because even with me sometimes I'm just like what is going on but then I have to look and I'm just like I'm a touring artist I've been touring for like over 10 years you know, there's things on my bucket list that I'm still checking off. Like, I just shot a shoe commercial. Like, I just got one of my songs, um, you know, in a trailer for a movie. And it's like, these oh, are wow. kind of things that, like, you know, as an independent artist, it's like you you really want, like, you dream to have. So it's just like, sometimes you just have to sit and actually just be thankful for, like, some of the little victories that you do have and not be so hard on yourself for, like, the things that you don't. So that's what I would say. Like, you just got to take your time, like. It's a slow burn, but the payoff and the end is way better. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's the, are you able to say what trailer? Is that out yet? Yeah. The trailer, Um, it's for a movie called Femme. It's a British movie that came out. They reworked my song Don Dada. So that's also the other thing Um, that I would say to new artists, like make sure you have all your paperwork for your songs and things like that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times I was able to survive just, you know, off um syncs and just like publishing when I wasn't really touring and you know, even though touring is really, really important. So like COVID was like the worst, but yeah, I was definitely learning the business and not being so caught up in just like being seen or like the Instagram cloud of it. It's like you actively want to constantly learn the business because that's how you have longevity in it. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, both in your kind of like keen fashion sense, and the, mu the music videos no i mean i like bro looking at the looking at your uh promo like photos for oh. this album like are you like that like that one where you're wearing the brown kind of is it supposed to be like sheepskin is that the vibe like is that i guess the... i don't know maybe i, I thought that was i thought i was like oh that's cool that's a good like the oh, yeah like, like yeah probably yeah i just buy things i like like that's also the other thing with being an artist like me it's like I'm so independent to the point I'm just like, I buy my own clothes, I pick my own photographer, like it's very like that. And it can be very draining a lot of times, but I don't know if it's just like a control thing, but it's just like, I make the music, I see the images, I see the videos, like that's, it just comes to me like that. So I'm definitely not one of those artists that needs a big creative team to kind of walk me through it. Some people are, it's just for me, I just it all comes together, the full package. Like I see the single cover, I see the album cover. That's just the way my brain works. So yeah. No, that's really cool. Cause yeah, that's what I was curious about is how significant the visual presentation comes into the process of you making music. But it seems like it's just like all uh, part of the same thing. It's all part of it. And it's so significant because I feel like a lot of the times, well, it's always been like this. People kind of listen with their eyes first anyway, but especially in this like social media driven market, it's like, people just want to see it. And if you got some drama attached to it, that's even more. <laughs> I'm not to say drama is really selling right now. So yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, that's why I always say even just like an album cover that's really good of an artist I don't know if it's really good. I'm Yeah. I'm like a good solid 30, 40, 50% more likely to just They're like, give what's it this a listen. about? What's this about? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I like the visuals. Um and and so focusing on this new album a bit more, it's titled Black Sheep after the the black sheep idiom of, you know, describing a member of a group who doesn't fit in with the rest. It's often something that's used with a negative connotation as like a deviant who's viewed in that group unfavorably. Like that's typically what it is. But, you know, what I, I find I really like the title. And I think it was really fitting because like personally, while obviously in a very different way than you, this is a dynamic that black sheep dynamic that I felt like I've related to over the years. Like I'm an Indian person, but I grew up in Ottawa in a very predominantly white community. And I always felt like my interests and beliefs tended to be this like really weird amalgamation of a bunch of different cultures. And it wasn't really necessarily like a cultures that and communities I was always in concert with, like personally, and even like political beliefs as well. And so I always I found that really interesting, but particularly because I do feel this dynamic is can be a double edged sword in the positive as well as well. And that's what I wonder with you, like, do you feel this lack of fitting into one or perfectly fitting into one specific community or identity has afforded you with benefits to kind of pull different influences together into your music? I mean, I think it's kind of like, I could just describe it as like spreading yourself really thin. And I think sometimes there's benefits to that because your your opportunities or your resources are not just limited to one pool. So it's like, it is great as an artist because you want to be able to go to the GLAAD Awards, but you also want to be able to do the interview with Ebro at Apple Music, which I don't think every queer artist has that ability to, to be able to leave the underground and also kind of parlay in the mainstream. I think for me personally, the issue is, well, not the issue, but the reason why I have this kind of black sheep identity is because I will never be enough for either of those kind of groups. It's kind of like, <laughs> like I'm not, like I'm not queer enough for the queers, but I'm also a little too queer for, for, for the non-queer. So, so that's kind of my identity. And I think it's cool because it's me and I will always be me, but it's a headache when you're just trying to market something. You're just like, what? And you, know, you don't want to like, you don't want to um, like uh, leave anybody out, you know, but I don't know, maybe that'll change in the future for me, but that's how I feel. Yeah, it's that idea exactly as you said it of uh, because you don't feel like you're necessarily enough that can feel like a, a challenge and you feel like, you know, because even in life, right, like it's I find it's easier to kind of get along at a baseline if you just kind of snugly fit into a community. But the flip side of that is it's not as easy to stand out and kind of have a unique experience and pull from Right. different perspectives, you know. And I think that that's why at the end, the I mean, it's like the it's it's a harder road, but it's like the payoff will be easier because it's like, you know, who you are as a person and you actually have like an artistic identity, you know, but to me, it doesn't it doesn't really affect my social life or like my personal life, because it's just like I love the fact that I have friends around the world and I'm, you know, you know, I love learning and experiencing different things. And that's what makes the music better to me. It's like very more like a cosmopolitan approach to it, which makes it feel fresh. You know, I feel like that's the issue with a lot of music now. It's like people are making music that sounds like music that's already out. So it's really flat. Like no one is really bringing in different flavors or different like dimensions to the music. But the downside of that is, is when you're trying to make a product and put it in market, it's like, well, what is this? Oh, uh, it's like it's too. This is too. This this is too much. Like it's a jazz house ball. Like what what is it? You know. But you know they'll catch up. I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm sure they are i mean i i don't know about you but i feel like the reception i'm seeing online has been very positive for Yeah. this Yeah. record like it's really impressive and you know you've spoken about black sheep as your most uh one of your most personal records to date and i and i wonder what do you What do you hope people learn about you, the person, from this album? Um, I don't think it's anything, let me see. I don't want them to really learn anything personal. I think the, the main personal thing about it is like me touching on things in the industry and things like that. Like some of the content is more personal in the sense because I'm sharing more of my viewpoints. But I think what I would want people to take away is that like 
however you identify my music or whatever you take away from it, I just want people to realize that I'm trying my best to make really good music, like really good, fresh music. Like that's the main thing. And I want people to, to consider me like a strong songwriter at the end of the day. Cause a lot of the times it was like, I kind of wanted to be a really good rapper. But then when I'm looking at everybody else, I'm like, do I even really have to be a good rapper? Like <laughs> at this point. So to me, I'm just like, just, just know kicks is a good songwriter, you know? I mean, that shows up like, uh there are some hits on this album like mind reader is maybe i'll that. sell them maybe i'll sell them to other people i'll sell them to bigger artists to get some money you know? yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean there's there's a lot of hits i mean you could i i always hear that writing for some of these like big name acts like right. money wise can get you some some, yeah. some real shit i mean i'm down to me it's like i love touring and i love performing but I always have to remind myself that like the the core of what I do is just the music and the lyrics. So it's like I have no problem just writing a song and just like and it's for some reason it's more fulfilling. Like I wrote all like the vocal, you know, hooks on the record. So to hear someone like Don Richard, who's I've, I've been a fan of since I was like little, like in high school, like sing my lyrics. It's like really like a, a weird out of body experience for me. So so you so you wrote that and just kind of like thought like you wrote the melody and all that and then they just performed it. Yeah, it's kind of like me singing Ray right off key in the studio, like, ah, okay, now you sing this, make it make sense. And then they send it back and I'm like, period, that's what I was trying to do. Right? No, that's, man, that that personally for me as a listener, I've always loved the melody writers. Like, I find right. that so special. And like, I don't, it's such a, it's such an art. Like, it's such a, I don't know how to say it. It seems so amorphous to me as like an outsider who does not make music but it's like the one skill that i feel like at least as a listener i recognize it like i'm good at like recognizing melodies I have a great memory for it and i appreciate it like in any yeah. genre even the most like underground experimental hip-hop when there's a bit of melody i'm always just kind of perk up so that was my thing for this record it was like because i've always wanted to play with like kind of vocals and things like that and i was like just do it. Like, what's if you send a demo to somebody? If you sing it off key, the worst they can say is no. But I was, mm -hmm. I was, I was blessed that I was able to collaborate with some really great singers that were able to bring my lyrics to life. And I was just like, whoa. So yeah, I wrote the whole record, and that's one of the main reasons I'm super, super proud of it. Because me and Sam really just got together and put our brains together, and this is what we came up with. Yeah, the the chemistry between you two was incredible, and I find, as you said earlier you like to have a common thread between all the tracks on an album. And this one, man, the flow from track to track, like global entry to downtown J, it's like, it really runs like a super kind of quick, it's like a quick listen, even though it, you know, it's still 20, late 20 minutes. It's really yeah. good. And the world building, it really feels like a, like you're at, you're like a sleek night out on the town, but it's like late as fuck, like not or early. It doesn't feel like a I 10 kinda... p.m. I kind of like my project to kind of feel like a play in a way. It's kind of like very that like it's because those that's always my my favorite albums to listen to when you're like you're like committed to it from the start to finish. Does that always make for the best singles? Maybe not. But it's just like to me, I just like listening to things that I'm just like, oh, that was a moment. Something you just put on and just go and clean your house and just fold your clothes and you're just like ready to go, you know, by the end of the album. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I think you did a good job balancing that because you do have the the smash single type vibe, like uh, like Mind Reader, as I mentioned, but then you also have, like I said, like like Downtown Jay. I love that song, but it's Thank but you. it's like it's like a minute and a half. It's an interlude, not even your yeah. voice on that one, but it just sounds incredible, and it's you got those little mini moments within the sequence of a record that I like, and you know, you mentioned Sam Katz, uh, mm -hmm. produced fully by him what was the the kind of blueprint or the atmosphere you were trying to go for with the sound of this of this album well it it we kind of don't really start with a move like when me and sam worked on records because he did the last record Svengali. so i kind of just let him lead and it's kind of like we just bounce ideas off each other what i do know though is like if me and him are kind of locked in a groove i kind of have to be on top of him to be like crank out more, crank out more. Because a lot of the times with creatives, it could also be for writers too. It's like, once you're at a sync, you know, you're kind of in different places, you know, organically or like taste-wise. So it's harder to do it. But like, if you're like, if the juices are flowing, you're just like, 
whip it out, whip it out. So that's kind of how the record works. Cause it's, you know, there's working with him. There's not like really songs that don't make the cut. It's like, we do all the songs and we put them all out. Like, this is what it is. So that's how it works. Yeah. And I feel like this one, it really, cause Bengali had, I feel this one feel ha has more of a consistency between mm -hmm. it. That one had a lot more kind of like a bit more of like highs and lows. This right. one just felt like a really that like, was more moody. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's yeah, the moody. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I, I think the the sound is incredible. And like, you know, given you've worked with Sam so frequently, what makes your your creative synergy 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 between you two so strong? Um, I think it's two things. I think it's the fact that we don't take um ourselves too seriously and the fact that we're also very true to our taste. I think that, you know sometimes he has to reel me in sometimes i have to reel him in because it's just like that's a little too punk or that's just a little too pushing it but it's like we're genuinely operating in a space where we really don't pay attention to what's popular or what's trending and we just want to do what we want to do will that necessarily mean we're the most successful no but i think we make music that's kind of like oh that's cool you know and i think that that's our main thing we just want to do really cool fresh stuff so yeah and, and, you know, I really like on this album how it's the way jazz gets kind of like it's like a sprinkle. It's not the main thing, but it is a pretty significant sprinkle on all of these songs. And I think it just gives it a really nice swing mm -hmm. to like a lot. It's like a global entry I mentioned, too. It's like a very I don't like the word classy in this moment, but it feels very refined, like a very refined. Well, I'm blend a, grown, of a bunch of sounds. I'm a grown woman now. So, yeah. For me, I just love that because, you know, I think that's a lot of what's missing in a lot of music is like live instruments. You know, I um I had some live drumming added to the end of um Do That Baby, the track with Don Rashad that I'm obsessed with. It's like any chance I get to have someone put something that's not digital on a record, I'm going to do it because I feel like that that adds a certain texture to this to music that's kind of missing so and i do love electronic music don't get me wrong but i do think when you combine it the right way it can kind of elevate the experience what else was done live on this album sam did a lot of um live playing on it like i couldn't even tell you i'm drunk what else there, there's like also he collaborated with somebody else that did something you would have to talk to sam about all mm. of that it's like i I handle the antics and the words and Sam does all that stuff. Yeah. No, but it, it was good. It was a really nice kind of like extra little flavor to it. Uh, but yeah, I really think this record was just a really nice display of what you can do. And I liked it too. Like if you, if someone's unfamiliar and they check your music out, they might think this is how all your albums are. Or like they're kind of in this world, but then you listen to Svengali and you go earlier, earlier into your work. It just impresses me the ability you have to lock in on a vision. Like, cause I think you said it earlier, like you really like are you kind of have a, a particular vibe you're going for and you just fucking go. And it's, it's right. impressive. Yeah. And I think also people, um, I, like on this, like talking to different people about the record, they, they see like, um, they're like, we hear like a growth in your music from like previous projects to now. And I'm like, I would hope so. Cause I mean, I started writing music when I was like in my twenties and I'm not like, I'm in my thirties now. So I would hope that there would be some type of refinement and like growth, but that's also the fact of like I've I've been writing on my own records. It would be kind of different if I was working with more like you know other co-writers and other songwriters because it wouldn't be coming from me. But all my records are kind of like annoying baby pictures and, and photos from like my youth where I'm just like, oh, I can't believe I said that or why did I do that? But it's I love it because it's actually honest. It's like time capsule moments for me. So yeah. No, that's that's awesome. I love that analogy. <laughs> When you looking forward now, what are some like upcoming potentially projects or you know, merch tour dates that people should look out for as well? Well, I'm currently going to be going on the uh, Cakes Fest tour. Um, I did like a little gig in New York that was really successful. So I decided that I was just going to take that whole party and live performance concept and put it on the road. So all of June, which is Pride Month, I'll be um, on tour in North America. I'll be in Toronto, Montreal. Oh, shit. Memphis uh, yeah, San Francisco, LA, New York, and then I'm taking it to Europe in July. So yeah, just hit me up on socials if anybody's interested, and yeah, I'll come to a show. Are those dates bit. already there? All yeah, right. the Kickstarter tours is already up for North America. Yeah, so it I'll be in Toronto on the twenty third, I believe. 
Okay. Yeah. That's sweet. That's sweet. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, I was I'm think you I just know I have a bunch of shows like that middle part, but I should be should be good. That's sweet. And uh yeah, so that's that's really interesting. And in terms of like uh have you even started like working on a new project in the future? You're still just kind of always. focused on black sheep. No, always. Oh yeah. It's good because it's like um we're kind of we're kind of debating if you want to do a remix project of it, like you know, just to get some, you know, more dancey kind of remixes out of it. But I'm already working on new music. Like I have a song with Mighty Mark coming out at the end of the month, who's a producer based in Baltimore. Like I have like a bunch of features in the can and it's just me arranging things for the timeline. Uh, but I'm happy to be working. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no. I mean, I just have to say your approach to rap and the way you blend everything together, it's just really creative and inspiring, like on a really real level like i always appreciate artists that can give me especially in hip-hop something that's fun but has substance to it like that's the the per- perfect thing. i mean that's the, those are kind of the the artists that i gravitated to the most like i mean growing up listening to a lot of that 90s hip-hop it was cool but it kind of i didn't i feel like i didn't have a space for me you know until i started listening to people more like buster rhymes and like other artists like red man who were kind of technically really really good but also very funny and also Mm -hmm. you know they they added different elements to the music where it didn't have to feel so one-dimensional so yeah that's what i try to operate as like i try to just you know operate in that kind of vein yeah you really toe the line with that the quirks while making it not you're not like a parody of anything you're still like a real but like it's funny you know like crushing the club has some hilarious lines I'm not I'm like and that's the thing that's a, that's one thing too like I'm straight but like the way you rap about some of the sexual shit it's really funny like I love it like it's that's been that's been my whole shtick this whole, my whole career everyone is just like wow straight people like your music and I'm like I, I I guess it's okay like I don't know like yeah yeah you know you do really well you do really well um uh, man this was a really fun conversation and I just have to say I really appreciate the time And I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Peace. Peace. So there we have it. Another episode of the Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV. I hope this episode gave you some new perspectives and insights into what the greatest art form known to man in hip-hop music has to offer. If you want to support the show in the most meaningful way possible, it would be my absolute honor to have you as a patron in the new Rap Music Plug podcast Patreon. Through this Patreon, you will be getting exclusive content such as bonus episodes, exclusive album recommendations, exclusive playlists, early access to episodes, and more. And above all though, you will be able to support the show directly in a way that will not only justify the crazy amount of time I spend on this show already, but allow me to cover some of the expenses related to supporting all of these great artists that we cover on the show through the website and will allow us to sustain and build on this amazing growth that the RMPP has experienced recently. So if you have any questions about any of the Patreon stuff or just want to keep tabs on the show, interact with me on rap music and all the great stuff that we can talk about, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Rap Music Plug Pod or shoot me an email at qlctv.podcast at gmail.com. You can also rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and subscribe on YouTube and Spotify as well. But that's enough self-promotion for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace.